In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install Open Daylight and the Cisco OpenFlow Manager or OFM application on a Docker container running in GNS3. In this example, I'm going to drag a Windows PC into the topology. You could use a Firefox host or another device if you wanted to. But in this example, I'll simply use a Windows PC and I'll start that PC up. And of course, at times like this, Windows decides to do a Windows update. So at this point, I'll bring a Firefox device into the topology. So we've got a, another GUI device to use while Windows decides to update. And I'll start up that Firefox device. And I'll open up a console. So there's Firefox ready. Looks like Windows is going to take a while. So while we're waiting for the updates, I'll connect to the controller. There's our open daylight prompt. So I'll log in as admin, admin. At the moment, no topology is displayed. So on the same IP address, I'm going to connect to port 9000. And as you can see, we've got OFM displayed. We're seeing that there's no inventory data, but that's because there are no switches connected to the topology. So the next step is to configure the OpenFlow switches to talk to the controller. So as an example, here's OpenFlow switch one. IF config eth0 shows us the IP address of the switch. At the moment, there's no IP address configured. And that's because I need to configure the switch to use DHCP. So I'll edit the config of the switch. And on eth0, I'll enable DHCP and start up the switch again. Do something similar on the second switch. I'll stop it. Edit to the config. And use DHCP on Ethernet 0. And start up the switch again. And then I can open up a console to the switches. So here's OpenFlow switch 1. So I have config eth0 again. You can see the IP address, can it ping the controller? Controller is 192.168.122.92. Yes, it can. So switch one can ping the controller. Yes, switch two, ping 192.168.122.92. Yes, it can also ping the controller. Before I go any further, I'm going to enable spanning tree on both these switches. Just to ensure that we don't have problems with loops. And then what I'm going to do is connect the two switches to each other. These are our management interfaces. The OpenFlow network is going to run on Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. We can see that kind of information by looking at the bridge, bridge zero. And on bridge zero, using that command, we can see the switch DPID, number of tables supported, number of buffers, and notice which interfaces are part of the switch. So Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 are switch ports in OpenFlow. We could see that as well by using OVS, VS, Kettle, Show, or VSCTL show. Notice the interfaces here, Ethernet 2, Ethernet 1, part of bridge 0. 
So let's configure the switches to talk to the controller. Okay, so on the first switch, get it to talk to the controller. Second switch, get it to talk to the controller. OVS VS CTL show should show us if there's a connection to the controller. And as you can see, switch one is connected to the controller. And on the second switch, it's also connected to the controller. So the two open flow switches are communicating with the controller. In Firefox, we can see the two open flow switches shown on the controller. And in OFM, the open flow application, we can see the two switches. So on Ubuntu 3, which is connected to Open vSwitch 1, IF config shows us the IP address of this PC. I configured the first PC with this IP address and the second PC with 3. So back on ODL, reload. Notice we see the two PCs that are now discovered as part of the topology. And in OFM, we should see the two PCs by clicking on the show host devices option. And there we go, two PCs are displayed. So we've now got open daylight displaying the switches and the PCs. So it's taken a while, but my Windows PC has now decided to finish its updates. So let's log in and use Windows. You can have problems with a Firefox host and let's see if it can connect to Open Daylight. So there's ODL, I'll log in as admin admin. And as you can see, we have the OpenFlow topology displayed in Windows. So I'll now connect to port 9000 and uh, there's our topology shown on the Windows PC. So now let's look at the flow table of one of the switches. So there's our topology, I'll click on flow manager. You can see we've got two open flow switches and scrolling down we can see the flow tables of the switches. As an example, if I click on one of the flows, so I'm going to click View, we can see that this is a flow entry with a priority of two. It's matching traffic coming in on one port and sending it to multiple ports as well as sending it to the controller. So what we can do now is add a flow entry to one of the switches I'm going to add it to table zero with an ID of one, two, three, four, five, and a priority of 1000. I'll set the hard timeout in this example to 60 seconds so that it gets removed after 60 seconds. And I'm going to match traffic coming in on. So open flow port one, and I'm going to And the action I'm going to use is a drop. Now the switch numbers here aren't very clear. I found that in later releases of Open Daylight and by using Chrome, you get a much easier to read interface. But in this example, what we're going to do is drop flows. I'm going to do a show preview. That's what we're going to send to the switch. Now before I click send, notice the pings are succeeding between the devices. But when I send the command to the switch, notice the pings are now failing. So the sequence numbers have stopped incrementing. If I break that ping and do the ping again, notice the pings are now failing. So we've successfully sent a flow to an open flow switch. 
So I'll refresh the flow table. There's our flow entry. Pings are failing at the moment. But what I'll do now is delete that flow entry. And notice the pings start succeeding once again. So just to prove the point, I'll add the flow entry back again. So I'll add a new flow entry. Add it in this example to the second switch. Table zero, ID one, two, three, four, five. I'll set to the priority to a thousand. In this example, I'll set the hard timeout to 10 seconds. So it should write for the flow. 10 seconds later, it should be removed. I'm going to match traffic coming in on port one of the switch. And scrolling down, I'm going to drop that traffic. So send to the flow entry. Notice the sequence numbers are not incrementing. In other words, it's failed. In other words, pings are failing. But notice a few seconds later, the pings start succeeding again because the flow entry was removed. But if I add it to the switch with a hard timeout, of zero and an idle timeout of zero, it means the flow entry will never be removed until it's manually deleted. So I'm not gonna match anything, I'm just simply gonna drop all traffic. Pings are failing once again, not incrementing. Do the ping this side, it's not being sent. I'll search for an ID of one, two, three, four, five. There's our flow entry. So if I dump the flow table of the first switch, there are a bunch of entries, but what I'm gonna do is grep for 1000. You can see the flow entry is here. That's the flow entry on the switch. Table zero matching everything. Action is drop. I delete that flow entry now and then search for that flow entry again. It's not there. And notice the pings are succeeding on both the hosts. So this was a fairly long-winded setup. I've put the commands below the video. It's possible to install Open Daylight and the OpenFlow Manager on a Docker container within GNS3 you may prefer doing that on a virtual machine so that you have persistency. But I've now demonstrated a topology with Open Daylight, the OpenFlow Manager, a Cisco switch used in the management network, and OpenV switch switches that we're writing flows to. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.